I am so glad to see you all again. Today we are talking about traveling with a baby, with a nine month old specifically, which is what I have. Um, just recently we got back from a two week vacation in Michigan visiting my family and it was our first flight with our nine month old. And I, like probably many of you watching this video now, <laughs> I researched so much about what to expect when traveling with a baby, what you need to pack, what you need to keep in mind, all of that. And so today I thought I would not do those kinds of videos necessarily, but do a sort of a post, <laughs> post flight analysis of what worked and what was just a really bad idea because I definitely made tons of mistakes on this flight and I kind of wanted to share my do's and don'ts with you and the things to consider yourself when you're flying. Uh, now I actually consider myself a pretty savvy traveler by airline in general. I, um, for the last three or four years with my previous job, I traveled at least twice a month to a trade show, a conference, a meeting, and I was really good about going through security fast, packing a carry-on. You know, I was just really good at traveling. But thinking about traveling with a baby, I was like, oh my word, I am so anxious about it. And my anxiety was around not wanting to inconvenience people, not wanting to hold people up, whether it was in the security line, whether it was, you know, trying to board the plane and taking a long time getting settled. Obviously, a crying baby on the flight made me anxious. But yeah, it was just all around not wanting to inconvenience people. And when it came down to it, as the trip started, I just kind of forgot about that. I'm like, Katie, it's going to be okay. You're going to make it. You know, the flight doesn't last forever. And not everybody is a jerk. Everyone, you know, there's going to be nice people that you meet on the flight. And if you inconvenience someone, who cares? You, as long as you're not being inconsiderate, you know, you're trying your best, get over it, Katie. And that kind of helped. <laughs> so that's my other ultimate tip is that, you know, there's just not, you're going to run into people that are going to eye roll and go, oh, great, you're traveling with a baby, baby on my flight. Who cares? Don't worry about it. Just do what's best for you. Do what's best for your baby. Stay calm. Give yourself plenty of time and relax. Once I embraced that relax mantra, it just became a lot easier and the flight became stress-free. And I think my baby even felt the fact that I was feeling more relaxed and, and calm. And so she kind of calmed down. So that's eh, just kind of the overall tip when traveling with a baby. So when you are considering traveling with a baby, I think there's kind of two main tips you need to decide on before you even get to the flight itself, before you get to the airport. And the biggest one I found when researching was car seat. We actually purchased an inexpensive car seat. We actually got it at Walmart. It was a Costco Sonera, Sonera. I'll have the link down below for you if you want to check it out, but it cost 40 bucks. We sent it straight to my parents' house and they met us at the airport with the car seat in the car. So that worked for us, but that won't work on every single trip. But if you're traveling to grandma and grandpa's, check out that option. But you have to consider that before you even step foot in the airport. The other option you kind of have to decide on is how to get your baby through the airport. And I think this one is more age related for your baby. I think from what I could tell, if your baby was like three months and younger, four months and younger, you might want to consider taking your baby through the airport in a carrier, meaning like a Moby or an Ergo, Baby Bjorn, whatever you have, but that might be the better option. If your child is a little bit older, like ours, um, a stroller might be the best option because you can hang a diaper bag off of it. You can kind of carry more stuff with it. Your hands free in a sense that you're just pushing the stroller. Um, that worked great for us. I wanted to find an umbrella stroller that we could use exclusively for traveling. Um, so if it got damaged, we weren't gonna be upset about it. And I actually ended up purchasing the Summer Infant um, 3D Light umbrella stroller. And I'll link that down below as well. Um, basically, it's it's the convenience and collapsibility of an umbrella stroller. It's collapse is really small. It's easy to do one-handed. I stood in Bye Bye Baby with my baby on my hip, collapsing a million different umbrella strollers. And this one, you know, collapsed really easily, one-handed, great carrying straps but it also has the convenience of a fuller size stroller. It has an almost fully flat recline on it and has a little bit, a little canopy sunshade. 
So I thought it would be perfect for my daughter to take a nap in. She never ended up doing that on our layovers, but oh well, that was the idea. And I had a little storage basket underneath. So it's kind of like having a full size stroller, but in the small compact size of an umbrella stroller, which I thought was really handy. And we used it on our trip, um, obviously out and about, we used it at the airport. And we plan on using it for future car trips or airport trips because it's just really convenient. Um, nice, easy to collapse. What more do you need in an umbrella stroller? It was great. So the other thing you need to prepare before you actually arrive to the airport is the diaper bag. This was my biggest mistake of the entire trip. When I was reading about what to bring and, and in my paranoia, I was thinking I had to have a million toys, books, and snacks to keep my daughter entertained for the entire journey and I needed to pack it in a big bag because it would not fit in my standard diaper bag. And so I ended up purchasing a really large tote. Let me show it to you. I've actually got it right here. It is pretty big. It, it fit on the plane, no problem. But um, it's just a really large open tote, no pockets inside. Um, it was a great idea in theory, horrible in execution. For one thing, it was gigantic. It barely fit under the um, under the seat in, on the airplane, barely fit. Getting things in and out of the bag was a nightmare. I had to like dig in, I had to, um, you know, like try to rummage for my, my ID, the boarding passes, it, that, it was just a pain. So on the flight back home, I actually kind of streamlined everything that I brought, realizing I didn't need 18 million toys with me and 16 books. Um, I actually just limited how much I brought, I brought one book, and two toys and my daughter's blankie and I managed to pack it all in my everyday diaper bag which is the Skip Hop Duo Limited Edition French Stripe. I've talked about this um, in videos before and on my blog. I love this diaper bag. It has a messenger style strap which was convenient to not only carry around in the airport but also to hang off the stroller that we had. But it was just so much easier finding things in my diaper bag that I'm used to. I packed everything in its typical pockets no surprises. It's just so much better. So word to the wise, don't feel like you have to pack everything and be prepared for every scenario. You know, bring some extra diapers, bring a spare set of PJs in case there's a blowout, some extra Ziploc bags to, to store dirty bibs or dirty outfits. But really, when it comes to entertainment, I don't feel like you need tons because your baby is going to be entertained just from the sheer number of people walking around. Babies are people watchers. You can't blame them. People are funny. Um, they're going to be entertained by the flight attendants serving drinks. I barely needed entertainment. I needed a few Cheerios in my hands and that was pretty much it. I needed a book at one point and she needed her blanket, um, her little, little security blanket kind of thing. And that was pretty much all I needed as far as entertainment. So don't panic and think that you need to bring tons of stuff. Babies, just love to watch. So take advantage of that. No better place to people watch than an airport and on an airplane. Trust me. So once you get to the airport, here are the things that I found really helpful. One is we checked our suitcase. Um, we chose to fly Southwest for multiple reasons, but one of the big reasons is you can check a bag for free. So we did that and it was so nice, especially traveling by myself. Um, I just could not imagine holding a baby on my hip and trying to get a bag into the overhead bin by myself. I just couldn't envision it. So it was easier just to check a bag and be done with it. The other thing, when you get to the airport, give yourself plenty of time. I am, when I'm traveling solo, I am like a show up at the airport 30 minutes before my board time, you know, so I have plenty of time to go through security, get a drink or a Starbucks, get to the plane just as they're boarding. Like I have it timed perfectly. But with the baby, I made sure I gave myself plenty of time. I arrived to the airport early. So I had time to go through the line to check my bag and you have to get a special pass for your baby as a lap baby. Um, I go through security, get myself water, change a diaper, the baby's diaper, not your own, <laughs> but you know, it's just give yourself plenty of time so you, you can relax and not be worried. I mean, the last thing you need when you're already stressed about traveling with a baby is rushing yourself. That's not what you want. So give yourself plenty of time. And finally, once you're at the airport, before you get on the plane, this was another big tip and a mistake I made. Prep your bottle. If you're bottle feeding, prep that. Make sure it's ready to go before you get on the plane. I made the mistake on the first flight that we did. 
thinking I will make our the bottle with the formula on it as soon as I get in my seat. And I was early boarding, so I knew I had plenty of time to do it, but the coordination of doing it, like opening the water bottle, filling the bottle with the right amount of water, shaking the formula in, shaking it all up, putting everything back, that was a nightmare. Holding the baby on my lap and trying to like juggle everything, it was just such a nightmare. So if you're prepping a bottle beforehand or prepping any type of food, do it before you get on the flight. So that way all you gotta do is pull it out of your diaper bag, put it in that little seat back pouch, and then you're good to go. Don't don't even mess with trying to do that stuff on the airplane. It was so hard. Take my advice. Please don't do it. So once you actually make it onto the plane, the thing I found most helpful was actually as soon as I sat down before my seatmate joined me, I put the diaper bag on the seat next to me, pulled out the bottle, the snack, like just one snack, I pulled out a little bag of Cheerios and a toy or a blanket or, or whatever, just one little entertainment item, and then slide the bag under the seat in front of you and then put those few items that you pulled out just in that little seat back pocket in front of you. So that way it was just easy to grab. You didn't have to worry about digging into the diaper bag immediately. So just as soon as you sit down, pull out a few items, that way you've got them on hand and easy to grab. And then once you're on your plane, just relax. Deep, calm breaths. <laughs> I was so anxious that first flight. Like, is she gonna cry? I hope no one, people are gonna see, oh no, there's a baby next to me. I just relax. It's gonna be okay. The flight doesn't last forever. That's what one of my friends said to me when I was kind of venting and like saying, oh, I'm so nervous about this. She's like, don't worry. The flight doesn't last forever. Once you get off, you know, it's like, ah, I'm off the plane, but don't, don't worry about it. You're not stuck on it for, you know, a million years it will eventually end so just focus on the fact that it will be ending and stay calm and relax it'll be okay and then sort of some last random tips that I found and I'm sure these are like duh this is a duh tip but I don't know I can't help it um, if you are a dr. Brown's bottle user and this may be true for all bottles but for dr. Brown's bottles FYI these bottles leak at high altitude. Milk travels up that the center tube that is in the Dr. Brown's bottles and then leaked out the lid. So to solve that, I just untwisted the, the lid, the cap, just a touch, just enough to kind of release the pressure and it, did, it stopped leaking. But just make sure you tighten it back up before you feed your baby. But FYI, it's, it's like, why is this leaking? Oh, duh. So if you're a Dr. Brown's bottle user, FYI. And then speaking of bottles, my other kind of tip, um, if you have an older baby, my daughter is nine months, um, in hindsight, next time when I fly, I'm not gonna pack her bottle in my diaper bag because she actually is preferring to drink, at, right now, drinking out of um, these sippy cups that we have. These, This is an OXO brand, or OXO, um, and it's a straw type. And um, what I love about these sippy cups in particular is that it's got um, measurements on the side, so I can actually mix a formula um, right in this cup. I don't have to guess at how much water I'm adding and whatnot. So these are great. They're obviously much more compact and smaller than the bottles themselves. Um, and I can use this for really any drink, but um, she just, she likes drinking out of these much more at the moment than she does her bottles. So I wish in hindsight I had actually used this and kept this in my diaper bag as opposed to packing the bigger um, bottle. Um, but you know, lesson learned. Next time I know better. So I hope some of these tips helped you. If, if you're like me and you are researching for that first flight with your baby, it's gonna be okay, I promise. It'll go, it'll go fast. It'll be over before you know it. Um, and your baby may surprise you and be a dream. And everybody will go, what a lovely baby. And she's, they're so sweet. And I, I wish my baby was like this on a flight. You never know. And if your baby ends up screaming the entire time, just look at people and be like, it's a baby. Babies cry what and you know don't worry about it honestly it's it'll be okay it'll be okay if you want to hear any other information about traveling I actually wrote a pretty lengthy blog post about some of this stuff but even more on my blog and the link I have down below for you to check out if you need information on any of the products I mentioned particularly the stroller and the car seat I've got those links down below as well and then finally if you are curious about what I actually packed for myself as far as my clothes, I have a blog post dedicated to this whole entire trip. It was two weeks and I packed, I think it was 15 items um, and made 12 outfits out of it. So go ahead and check out that blog post if you're interested. I've got that linked 
down below as well. I hope this is helpful for you and I can't wait to talk to you guys next time.